Six comets, plus the interstellar visitor 3I slash Atlas, are all closing in on the Sun within 30 days of October 2025. Astronomers expect maybe two or three bright comets a year, but this time the lineup is seven all at once, including a visitor from another star system on a hyperbolic path. Is it a cosmic coincidence, a natural clustering never seen in modern records? Or does the data hint at something more? The odds, the origins, and the world's only past 3i slash atlas set the stage for a discovery that could rewrite what we know about randomness in the solar system. So, what's actually driving this wave, an unseen hand, or the wildest celestial jackpot in living memory? When a comet plunges toward the sun, a quiet transformation begins. At first, it is nothing more than a frozen speck, ice and dust locked together, orbiting in deep cold. But as the comet draws closer, sunlight grows fierce. This is perihelion, the moment of closest approach, when the sun's heat is most intense and the comet's true nature is revealed. At perihelion, a comet's surface can warm by hundreds of degrees in a matter of days. Ice buried beneath the crust turns directly to gas, water, carbon dioxide, ammonia. Pressure builds, cracks open, and jets erupt from the nucleus, firing streams of vapor and dust into space. These jets not only sculpt the comet's appearance, they can also nudge its path ever so slightly, tweaking the orbit by fractions of a second. For most comets, these changes are minute, but they show just how dynamic these objects become as they race past the sun. The result is a coma, a glowing envelope of gas and dust that can swell to tens of thousands of kilometers across. Sunlight scatters off this cloud, making the comet visible even from Earth. The coma is the source of the comet's brightness. For a comet to be visible to the naked eye, it needs to reach about magnitude 6 or less. Many never get that bright, fading in the background or lost in the sun's glare. But when conditions are right, a comet can outshine the stars, dominating the night sky with a ghostly glow. Then there are the tails, two distinct kinds, each shaped by different forces. The dust tail, broad and curved, forms as sunlight pushes tiny grains away from the coma. It reflects yellow-white light, arcing gently along the comet's path. The ion tail is a sharper, bluer streak carried straight back by the solar wind. This stream of charged particles sweeps molecules away at high speed, sometimes causing the tail to snap or disconnect entirely during solar storms. Both tails point away from the sun, but their angles and colors reveal what is happening at the heart of the comet. Every approach is a race between heat and time. Some comets flare up, then fragment or fade before they are ever seen from Earth. Others survive the encounter, looping back into the dark for another orbit, sometimes centuries later. But for the brief window around perihelion, every comet becomes a laboratory, its brightness and tails recording the invisible dance between ice, rock, and sunlight. These are the clues astronomers use to predict which comets will become legends and which will vanish without a trace. On Mount Aloha's dark slopes, Atlas, Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, keeps watch for intruders. In May 2025, it flagged C-2025 K1, a comet brightening fast, with perihelion set for October 8th. Early projections showed a risky solar pass, a possible breakup, and a brightness just above magnitude 5.2, enough for binoculars. Atlas's alert was only the beginning. In September, the Swan instrument aboard SOHO caught C-2025 R2. Swan specializes in ultraviolet detection, spotting comets by their hydrogen emissions. This one promised a close approach, 0.27 astronomical units from Earth, peaking around October 21st. Its southern trajectory and forecast magnitude of four raised hopes for naked eye visibility if its activity held. Stereo, usually tracking solar storms, found 414P, a faint, fast sun grazer. These comets skim the sun, risking disintegration before swinging away. The Mount Lemmon survey above Tucson contributed C-2025 A6, or Lemmon, a periodic visitor with a mapped orbit. Its perihelion also falls on October 21st, overlapping with Swan. Its brightness is unpredictable. Some models suggest magnitude 3, others as faint as 8. Lemmon's northern path means observers from Europe to Canada will have a clear view. Panstars, another Hawaiian survey, added C-2025 K1. This newcomer isn't expected to dazzle, but its timing matters for the cluster. Each comet comes from a different search, robotic telescopes, solar instruments, ground-based surveys. 
Their orbits cross and diverge, yet the calendar keeps drawing them together. Above them all is 3i slash Atlas, the interstellar outlier, spotted by Atlas in July 2025. Its hyperbolic path and outbound only trajectory mark it as the third confirmed visitor from beyond our solar system. Its perihelion falls on October 29th, just after the main group. Its arrival during this crowded window turns a rare event into something astronomers struggle to quantify. For the first time, seven named comets, each tracked by a different instrument, will peak within days of each other. The Discovery Network stretches from ground to orbit, ultraviolet to visible, weaving a global web of vigilance. With every new detection, October 2025 grows more crowded, setting the stage for a clustering that resists easy explanation. In a typical year, the sky offers its cometary wonders sparingly. The historical record, stretching back through a century of careful observation, shows a familiar rhythm. Two, maybe three comets bright enough for binoculars, each spaced out across the seasons. Most years pass without any naked eye spectacle at all. When a comet does flare into view, it is usually a solitary object, not part of a crowd. Astronomers, both amateur and professional, have grown used to this measured pace, a slow drip of icy visitors, each arrival a minor event in the quiet ledger of the night sky. Catalogues from the Minor Planet Center and the International Astronomical Union bear this out. Between 1900 and 2022, the mean number of comets reaching binocular visibility per year hovers just above two. Some decades, like the 1950s or early 2000s, saw brief upswings as new surveys came online or as solar activity stirred up more distant objects. Yet, even with the advent of all-sky search programs, NEAT, PANSTARS, ATLAS, the basic cadence held. Bright comets remained rare. Their arrivals were scattered, often separated by months or even years. The records show only a handful of cases where two comets reached similar brightness within a few weeks of each other. Those episodes became the stuff of stargazing legend. The clustering forecast for October 2025 stands out against this backdrop like a lightning bolt on a clear night. Instead of two or three, the calendar shows seven comets peaking in less than 30 days, including an interstellar interloper. The numbers strain belief. Monte Carlo simulations, using a century's worth of perihelion dates and brightness estimates, suggest that the odds of six bright comets and an interstellar object all crowding into a single month are less than one in 30,000, possibly as rare as one in 100,000. Even after correcting for the improved sensitivity of modern surveys, and for the fact that today's telescopes catch fainter, more distant objects than ever before, the probability barely shifts. The clustering is not a trick of technology. By every statistical yardstick, it is an outlier. Astronomical communities noticed the anomaly almost in real time. In early 2025, as orbital data for newly discovered comets was posted to open sky forums, a pattern began to emerge. Visualization tools, once the province of professionals, allowed hobbyists to overlay orbits and spot the swarm for themselves. The sense of surprise was palpable. No one could point to a historical precedent. The archives simply did not contain anything comparable. Survey bias, the perennial suspect in any surge of new discoveries, fails to explain the timing. While more comets are found now than in the age of photographic plates, the true rate of arrivals, especially for the brightest, most visible objects, has not changed enough to create this kind of pileup. Solar activity peaking in 2025 does boost the number of sun grazers and can shake loose a few extra fragments. But it cannot manufacture a parade of major comets, each on its own distinct path, converging on the same month. The clustering is not just a quirk of how we look. It is a real, physical event written across the sky.